In this video we are taking another look at the currently most seen kill team in competitive play, the Proteus kill team. This time however we are focusing on where to actually get the popular weapons from. With so many options available, getting our hands on the actual plastic bits can be at least as challenging as setting up the loadouts in our army building tool of choice. To round things up, there will be some modeling recommendations and a quick wrap up. Welcome to Swiss Hammer, your channel for modeling in Warhammer 40k. My name is Temmer and I will be guiding you through this video. All too quickly proclaimed dead by some content creators early 9th edition, the Proteus kill team has remained a staple of competitive lists during these past months. In the current meta game, it is not just Dreadnoughts that keep showing up in Deathwatch winning lists, but also anywhere between 3 to 4 Proteus kill teams. That's right, the Firstborns are more popular than ever in the Deathwatch, and we are actually winning. A tournament list that has been increasingly popular these past few weeks is the one that Jack Harpster played to rank 11 at the big ACO tournament and shortly after John Lennon piloted it to rank 1 at the Onslaught GT, the first GT win of Deathwatch in 9th edition. What stands out in this list apart from the many dreadnoughts are the three identical Proteus kill teams consisting out of the mandatory five Deathwatch veterans, four veteran bikers and a single Vanguard veteran. At the recent Charity Hammer Prep GT we have also seen an adaptation of this list winning the tournament but this time with a grand total of four Proteus kill teams. Remaining true to the original list it has similar loadouts within the four kill teams. I have covered these tournament lists and results in more detail in a previous video, the link is in the description. With Proteus kill teams not going anywhere anytime soon, both newcomers and veterans alike might wonder where to exactly get both the models and the weapons required to build these kind of army lists from. Without further delay, let's look at some of the boxes and how we can best use them to build our Proteus kill teams with the competitive loadouts. Starting with the obvious pick, the Deathwatch kill team. Nonetheless, a quick word on this one for the newcomers. It can be a little confusing because the datasheet says Deathwatch veterans and the actual kill teams are named differently. But basically this box is what you want in order to build Deathwatch veterans and or the Proteus kill team. The sprues contained within are also the exact same as you would get from the old gem, that is the start collecting Deathwatch. The 10 Deathwatch veterans within are basically two times this Deathwatch kill team box. The great part about this is that as it currently stands, a lot of the weapons on these sprues are actually competitive and or exclusive to Deathwatch. Therefore, you cannot really go wrong with this one. Some of the currently most popular Deathwatch veterans loadouts are as following. Deathwatch Bolt Gun and Storm Shield, Deathwatch Bolt Gun and Power Sword or Chainsword for Bacce and Deathwatch Shotguns. Fortunately, this box has you covered with 5 bolt guns and 5 power swords. It also contains 2 shotguns and 2 storm shields, so that's a great starting point, but for the amount of bodies you get from a single box, it won't be enough by itself. What's also worth mentioning is that the Xenoface Blade and the Thunder Hammers are also useful to have for other datasheets, so these come in handy. The Frag Cannon, the Infernus Heavy Bolter and the Stalker Pattern Bolt Gun do see some play, though currently they don't appear in the top performing competitive lists. All in all, the only weapons that are currently unusable are the two power maces, but you can clip those off and use the spare arms if you need them for some kit bashing. While this box is great value overall, it will primarily leave you short on storm shields, shotguns, chainswords and combi weapons. The latter are in case you wanted to make use of these over the regular Deathwatch bolt guns, which has seen some competitive play, especially with the combi flamers. 
If you are among the lucky ones to have access to a bit vendor, it is far cheaper to buy them through these over going for multiple kill team boxes as you'll end up with far more bodies than you'll ever need. There are of course also third party alternatives, but with GW's recent update to tournament rules, I am not going to dig into that. Another box to help us out with the loadouts is the Vanguard Veterans one. Vanguard Veterans by themselves make a great addition to the Proteus Scale team and their currently most popular loadout is the Chum Pack, Lightning Claw and Storm Shield. Through this box you'll get enough Lightning Claws, Chum Packs and 4 of the Storm Shields. They also contain 5 Chain Swords and a single Power Sword which you can pass on to the Death Watch Veterans. The box the box also contains a single power axe, which will come in handy, but more on that later on. Basically, this means that between the two boxes, we now have everything but the combi weapons covered. Fortunately, for this we can make use of the Sternguard Veteran Squad box. The keen observer may have noticed that the Death Watch can in fact not take Sternguard Veterans, but that's primarily because the Death Watch Veterans are basically Sternguard Veterans. The Sternguard box has some fantastic looking bits and personally I like it just for that, but in addition to this we get two of each combi weapon. Furthermore, there is also a power fist and two storm bolters that might find a home in the Death Watch. Same as with the shotguns though, there are only two combi weapons per type and you most likely will want five of the same, therefore a bit swender or alternatives will always end up being cheaper compared to having to buy multiple of these boxes just for the weapons. The hobby isn't cheap and playing Death Watch certainly proves that point. Between these three kits, you are basically covered as far as Death Watch and Vanguard veterans are concerned. Which brings us to the veteran bikers. First of all, I've had people ask in the past where to get these guys from. Basically, a veteran biker is just a Space Marine biker model. However, as we can give them a free chainsword or even power weapons, I prefer to use the fancier kits, for instance from the Dark Angels Ravenwing, where the models look more like veterans and they hold a close combat weapon similar to the Outriders. Previously, I mentioned power axes, so what's the deal with those? Basically, so far into 9th edition, it was common to run the power swords on the veteran bikers as a cheap upgrade over the regular chain swords. This compensated somewhat for the lack of extra attacks compared to outriders on the charge. However, as you guys have no doubt heard by now, admech is a thing and orcs are going to T5. This means that the plus 2 strength, aka putting your marines up to strength 6 instead of 5, is preferable in these matchups and the loss of 1 AP is well worth it. The bad news is that power axes are not that easy to come by. There is that single one in the Vanguard Veteran box, but as we commonly see 3 to 4 veteran bikers in a Proteus skill team, that won't get us very far. When I hear axes though, I immediately think of space wolves. Much to my dismay, their kits don't come with that many axes either. There are two contained within the space wolves pack and another one on the old firstborn upgrade kit. As with the storm shields, the bits vendor really seems to be the best bet in order to get these. Fortunately, if you are going for power swords and or chain swords, we have plenty of these from the kill team and the vanguard veteran boxes. Moving on to the last potential members of the Proteus kill team, the Terminators. For these guys, what we commonly see are either the Cyclone Missile Launchers or the Thunderhammer and Storm Shield. Good news first. The Assault Terminator kit comes with both the Lightning Claw as well as the Thunderhammer and Storm Shield loadout for each of the Terminators. So this might even provide an additional way to get access to Storm Shields for the veterans. However, one word of warning here, the Terminator arms are bigger than the ones for the veterans, so you will have to clip off the shield if you want to recycle it for the veterans. I suppose that's where the spare arms from the power molds previously mentioned come in handy. 
The situation becomes a bit more difficult with the Range Terminator squad though. What's unique about the Death Watch Terminators is that they can take 3 heavy weapons per squad, which results in the popular Triple Cyclone Missile Launcher loadout we are seeing in competitive play. However, the box only comes with a single launcher, because that's the limit for the Vanilla Terminators. In addition to a bits vendor, Terminators can also be frequently found on auction sites like eBay for cheap. All in all, by combining several of the firstborn boxes, we can cover a good amount of the popular loadouts without ending up with too many spare bodies and completely breaking our wallets. While bits vendors and or alternatives will end up being cheaper, it of course largely depends on what you have available in your area. Last but not least, let's have a look at some modeling recommendations. This is a simple one guys, prepare to stock up on magnets. As we covered over the course of this video, and no doubt several before that, there are multiple competitive loadouts for the majority of models in the Proteus kill team. Deathwatch veterans, Vanguard veterans, Terminators, and now even veteran bikers, you want these guys to be magnetized. 9th edition is progressing at an impressive rate and especially the competitive scene is far more short-lived than casual play. Another thing to keep in mind is that the Vanguard Veteran is basically just a veteran space marine with a jump pack. What I personally did was to magnetize the backpacks as well, that way you can freely exchange Death Watch and Vanguard Veterans in whatever way you need them. To wrap things up, over the course of the video, we have looked at how to get our hands on the plastic bits required to build the competitive loadouts for the ever popular Proteus kill team. While we are somewhat fortunate that the Deathwatch kill team box already provides us with a majority of the currently competitive loadouts, getting the Vanguard veterans as well as the Sternguard veterans box on top rounds things up for the most part. Largely overlooked up until now, power axes might gain popularity due to orcs going up to toughness 5 with their new codex. Especially on the veteran bikers, this could replace the power swords that have seen play so far. The bad news is that the power axes are a bit difficult to get in bulk, with Vanguard veterans or space wolves kits offering some. For the Terminators, the Assault Terminator box comes with plenty of spares, while the main problem with the Range Terminator box is the single Cyclone Missile Launcher contained within. Deathwatch Terminators are unique in the way that they can bring up to three of them in a single squad. Overall, while we can get a steady supply for the majority of the loadouts, the mentioned power axes, shotguns, combi weapons and cyclone missile launchers might be difficult to get in bulk through the regular boxes. Having access to a bit's vendor or alternatives really helps for these. So that's it for getting the right boxes in order to build the competitive loadouts for the Proteus kill team in the Death Watch. Which are your favorite boxes and have I forgotten any important ones? Let me know in the comments. Finally, I would also like to mention that there is a Swiss Hammer Facebook page where I will be posting links to my videos as well as articles I find of interest. I do read a lot about the hobby, but not all of it will always end up as its own video. I look forward to seeing you there as well. I do also have a Patreon page. If you like my content, any additional support is greatly appreciated as it helps me invest into future videos. As always, thank you very much for watching guys, your continued support is greatly appreciated. I hope you have been enjoying this video, give me a thumbs up if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already. Thanks again and see you next time.